Sticklers for a circuit python. It's Prof G ready to bring a bit of joy, joystick style, as we learn to wire up a standard analog joystick to a Raspberry Pi Pico series board and read its X and Y coordinates plus its onboard button taps. This skill is going to set us up for future lessons, including rubber band launcher and robot arm. Three dog knight sung joy to the world, but one purple snake will bring some joystick to the world, circuit python style. Let's learn big. If you're new here, welcome. My students have been following along our entire semester of CircuitPython course for new electronics makers. If you need to set things up, like configuring your Pico for CircuitPython, or if you want instructions on how to download and configure the free PyCharm and CircUp software that we use in this course, highly recommended, check out the ordered playlist. Now for class, I bought my students a bunch of these super inexpensive joysticks from AliExpress. Now a standard analog joystick is really just two potentiometers and a button. So we're going to wire it up with five wires, one for the X direction, that X is one potentiometer. In most orientations, X is left to right. The other is the Y direction, that's usually up and down, that's your second potentiometer. There's one pin for the button on this joystick, it's labeled SW for switch. Pushing down on the joystick acts as a button press. There's a ground pin that's shared and a power pin that's also shared. Now, one thing to watch out for, on this joystick, the power is labeled 5 volt. That's because old school Arduino support 5 volt power, but microcontrollers like the Pico expect that you'll use the 3.3 pin to power your potentiometer. If you don't input power using 3.3 volt, your readings will be off, so be careful. Despite the silkscreen label, use the 3.3 volt power pin when connecting this joystick to your Pico, and that'll also hold for most other microcontrollers like the Circuit Playground and most ESP32 boards. And as we wire things up for testing, this is the wiring diagram I'm going to use. Now, it's important to note that the pin order will vary by joystick vendor. There isn't a standard order for pins or even the labels for the pins. But in my build, I have power to 3.3 volt out, which you should use too. I have my X axis to the Pico's A0 pin. That's also GP26. Remember, you need to use analog pins for joystick input because these are potentiometers. My Y axis is to GP27 or pin A1 on the Pico. Wire color doesn't matter, but I use yellow wire since the Y axis in the yellow both start with Y. My button is wired to GP6, B is for blue and for button, and the button labels can differ. The joystick I'm using has the button labeled SW for switch, but this fritzing diagram part uses SEL for select. I've also seen B or BUT used for button, and your joystick's ground can go to any ground pin on the Pico. And just to show you that the order and the labels can vary, when you compare the diagram I just showed you with how I've wired up my joystick, you can see my joystick labels differ in some cases and the order is different, but all the wiring ends up going to the same pins on the Pico. Now this is how I've wired things up on the breadboard. I've put the joystick as close to the user as you can and the wires in the back. Now most joysticks have these through holes in them and you can use these to screw your joystick to some kind of base. Depending on your joystick, you might find that this works well for a cardboard box and you can put your build electronics inside. In later lessons, you'll see that I use a laser cut wooden box. And in those lessons, I'm going to share the SVG for laser cutting your own box. But if you bought your joystick from a different vendor, your joystick measurements could very well be different from mine. So now let's code up this bad boy. Now I'm using the free version of PyCharm, considered by many to be the very best Python coding environment for professional Python programmers. And you can see my project is configured using my CircuitPy board, which is plugged in. I've opened my code.py file and I've deleted any code that's in here. We're gonna start from scratch. Now we've already had lessons on using both potentiometers and buttons in CircuitPython. See the playlist if you wanna go through those basics. But since we know how to use these already, I'm just going to grab the code that we've learned about from our CircuitPython tip sheet. Now remember that's at bit.ly slash CircuitPython, capital C, capital P, one word, dash tip, dash sheet. And since the joystick is really just two potentiometers, I'm going to find on the term joystick in here, command F Mac, control F Windows, type in potentiometer, and here's my setup code. So I'm going to highlight and copy this, then head back to PyCharm and paste it in. And in the first line, I'll add a comment for the name that I'll eventually save this file as when I back it up to my CircuitPython school folder, that'll be joystick-pico.py. 
and let's use the potentiometer setup to create two potentiometer objects, one for the x-axis and one for the y-axis. I'll change the name of this potentiometer object to x underscore axis, and this is wired to pin A0, although when I run the code, I'm going to see something curious about the axis labeling on my joystick. Now remember, A0 is the same as GP26. You can use either label in CircuitPython. Then I'll copy this line, paste it below, and create a y underscore axis object connected to pin A1. Then I'll print out joystick code running, and below this I'll create a while true loop, always with a capital T and colon at the end, and indented below this I'm going to get my x and y value readings with x underscore value equals x axis dot value and y underscore value equals y axis dot value. I could have called these variables anything, but I think x value and y value are good names. And then to see these readings, I'm going to print out an F string in between the double quotes, curlies, comma, space, curlies, and I'll put X value in between the first set of curlies and Y value in between the second set of curlies. Then I'll add a time.sleep passing in 0.1 to slow down the print statements and whoop, the red squigglies are PyCharm's way of letting me know that I need to import time up here, so I'll add that. And now let's also add code to configure our button. So back in our CircuitPython tip sheet, I'm going to find the code to configure button for a Raspberry Pi Pico. And if I search on button, button is mentioned a bunch of different places in here, but I want this standard button, not debounced external button. I'll copy the setup code, starting with importing digital I.O. through setting the pull-up resistor. I'll head back to my code and paste this in at the back of my import line. And I'll cut out this button code and put in a comment that says configure button below where I configure my potentiometer. Paste this back in. I'll keep the name as button, but I've wired this to pin GP6. And then down here below where I'm printing out my F string of X and Y value, I'm going to put in a while statement that detects whether or not my button is being pressed. So I'm going to say while button.value double equals false colon. Remember, with external buttons set up the way that we configure them up top, button.value is going to be false when that button is pressed. And indented below this, I'm going to print out an F string, and in between the double quotes, I'll do triple star, button pressed at colon, curly braces, comma, space, curly braces. The first one's going to say X underscore value, the second one Y underscore value. Then I'll open up the terminal in PyCharm, hop into TO, save this. And we see the joystick code is running. The stick is centered, so I'm halfway to 65535. But my joystick values seem flipped. X-axis is up, down. Y is right, left. Now button presses are being recorded, but the axis shift is really easy to fix. I'll swap my X and Y input. So X is a 1, Y is a 0. Let's save and run and see if this fixes things. Button works, push up increases Y, down lowers Y, left shrinks X, and I can swivel this around in all the corners, and it looks like it's tracking. Left, right is X, up, down is Y, looking good. You can rock that joystick in all directions, celebrate with swiveling, press that button, that's working great as well. Joystick conquered. So I'll stop my code, and I'm going to save this to my CircuitPython school folder as joystick-pico.py. Always remember to close that outermost tab. And now with this skill conquered, this is going to set us up for all sorts of fun builds, including our rubber band launcher and our robot arm. Post a picture or video of what you're building to Blue Sky. Use the hashtag builtwithprofg. Tag me. You might win the weekly Make Something Awesome sticker drawing. Tell your homies about all of our wonderful free university lessons. Do me a solid, drop that like and comment. Stay tuned, there's lots of goodness to come. Continue to hack and continue to make something awesome.